For the last four years or so, I've been training with some kind of algos in my chart, whether it's for having alerts or placing trades by itself or setting me some setups I could take myself in the market. I've always had some kind of algos that I coded myself or I developed myself to be able to help me with trading. I found when trading and traveling, it's a lot better if you have algos because you don't have to do all the work yourself. You're actually being able to uh, have the algos send you the setups you have to look at or have the algo take trades for you, which is a big help into not being so much at the chart all day and not taking so many trades by yourself. Today I'll show you how that works out, the process behind it, how I'm able to run some algos, how you can do the same as well, and we'll go through the whole settings behind it. Now the first thing I want to mention before we go into the video is the fact that I like to keep my algos hands off. I don't want to be there and like modify settings all the time, change stuff all the time. I want to be able to run them and then go away and have them make a decent profit, decent returns every month. Same thing when I trade manually, I'm not changing my rules every month. I have the same rules for a long period, like one year or more at least, minimum. So the algo should be doing the same thing. You should have some rules around it, of course, but the rules should stay pretty much the same all the time. If you have to constantly tweak your algos, do new back tests and like research stuff and find new settings for it, all the time, then you probably don't have a good algo. It's probably something that you are over optimizing and always kind of tweaking. Some people do it, but I want to have something hands off that reflects my manual trading. The same thing I'll do manually, but done with the algo. And that's kind of my philosophy behind algos. Okay, we don't want to add more work. We want to take off some work. We want to make things easier actually by doing that. So what I'm doing is I'm doing everything through a VPS because the VPS helps to be able to take trades 24 seven. And you don't want to let your computer run all the time and have the computer take trades when it's running itself because then you cannot close it, cannot travel with it. That's a lot of trouble. And if you run out of Wi-Fi or something, then you just cannot take trades. So I always use a VPS. So as you can see here, we have my algo taking trades. Now I'm only running a few pairs now that are fully optimized and fully good for being fully automated. And it says that I'm still working on some other pairs. I used to do it everything while we look at the zones myself on the chart. I would draw these zones myself. Then I would have the algo take trades within those zones. But now we have a way to do it where it's all automatic. So the algo will find the right zones for you. It will take the trades for you, but it's not fully done for all the pairs yet. So I'm only running it on a couple of pairs. And I've got, of course, two strategies here. So you'll see this two strategies are working at the same time uh, on different kind of time frames. But these are things running. So it's good to have this on the VPS because it's running all the time. Sure, like it looks very old. It's like an old Windows air platform, but it's, it does the job, right? So you want it to be able to take trades for you, run MT4, and then that's, that's it. That's the point. So you'll see if I double click here on my algo, you'll see here, this is the algo that I've developed. I have a coder who coded it for me. So I'm only kind of using it now. And the coder does the job, does a modification I need to, to do. Uh, big shout out here to Alejandro from the team who's doing all the coding. I know it's been a really good help into coding this because I'm, I used to code myself. I used to be a good coder, but I don't have very much uh, coding skill. I want to really work on that. It takes a lot of time. I don't want to be here coding. I think coding is something you can easily outsource, give to someone else. So for that reason, I'm not coding anything myself anymore. I have a coder doing it and he's doing a really good job with it. Now the algo has quite a bunch of settings. So you'll see it's fairly simple once you get to it and once you understand the settings. We don't need to modify all these things, of course, but we just want to make sure we allow the EA to trade. And uh, we have the risk here parameter, the position size is a fixed percent per trade. And uh, then we, we've got our time frame if you want to treat them all as one or multiple, which means if we want to take many trades at the same time frame or not. This is a Bongjuban reversal EA, so we have the Bongjuban settings here. We've got the engulfing bars, bar section bars. So we enable here with the strategy pin bars. So we look at pin bar setups too, as well as engulfing. And uh, then we've got a bunch of other settings that are not so useful. Actually, they are useful, but only in certain conditions. So here we have a volatility filter to filter only when you want to trade within volatility or not. You've got a filter here that's based on market noise. If you want to reduce the market noise, so that means like when the market's like really choppy back and forth, this is market noise. So we want to avoid trading when it's very noisy in the market. We also have a trend filter. The trend filter looks at taking trades within or counter trend. So in this example here, we've got our trend filter that is set just a little bit here above. It's actually disabled here, but we can do it where we can look at a trend or a counter trend. And then we look at it with either the moving average or the slope of the moving average. Now, some pairs are enabling the counter trend, pairs are trending more, or we see that the setup work better when it's trending or not trending, we can enable it. This strategy works much better when it's not trending. So when it's counter trend, we have much better results. When it's trending, we don't get so much results. But with the other strategy we have, uh, the Secretaria, who was developed by Michael Tama, 
and also coded by Alejandro. This strategy is much more for trend. So we enable the trend filter for with the trend in this case. Your USD is not a good example. It's one of the worst pairs for trading, but you'll see in this other strategy here, in this strategy here, which is the Secretaria, you see on the chart, we do have enabled here the trend and no trend. And we do look at the SMA slope for the trend and we don't exist if it's changing the trend. So if it's getting back to, let's say what's trending uh, to the upside, now it's trending down, we don't wanna get out, we keep the trade anyway. But in some cases we can get out of the trades. So you see the things here are quite lengthy. There's quite a bit of option to use. And it means that I'm able to trade different pairs, slightly different. Now I don't wanna like, change everything for each pair, but I do wanna have like slight differences for when it could perform better with some pairs. You know, some pairs are, act are acting differently. And that's a good thing to be able to optimize and work on. So that's kind of how it is. Uh, it's fairly simple once you get to it, but the biggest part of our goals is really the backtesting part of it. I want you to hear how to backtest because I've done this in other videos before, how to backtest our goals. I'll leave this link here in the corner if you want to watch it. But the backtesting part is something you want to have. First of all, you want to have good data to do your backtest. If you don't have good data, your backtest will not be good. It will not be reflective of real data. And then ideally you want to trade with the same broker you use for your backtest data. So we've seen with a few guys who use Ragos now, a few students, that if they use a different broker from the backtest, like a very strange broker sometimes, they might not get the same trades because the charts are always different based on the broker. Right? So you can use a broker, it's so gonna have a chart, that's gonna be a little bit different on the, on the other broker. And if you have the algo running, it, it could take different trades. So you wanna make sure as close as possible, you use the same broker for your trading as your backtesting. And you can always like, copy trades to a different account if you need to. Uh, but that's that's usually helps. Now you notice these algos are only for MT4. They're not for MT5 yet. Uh, part of it is because Anello is an MT4 coder and coding this to MT5 would take a lot more time. We have to transition the whole thing. The same code doesn't work for MT5. But for now it's, it's decent. We're able to use this and it's quite good. It works out well and we have pretty good results with it. Now the last thing I want to talk about here in this video is the two most important things are the back test and then the review process. Between that, you don't have a lot of work to do. You just have to let the algo run. You don't want to always like play with it, close it all the time. You want to leave it run for a while to get some good data on it. And it should be pretty much, like I said, hands off in the beginning. So you do your back test, you let the algo run, and then you review your performance over time. There's three process I do for my reviews. One weekly, one monthly, and one quarterly, every quarter. Weekly, I check all my trades. I check the results of my trades. I'll usually connect my account privately to my Facebook just for me to be able to look at the results and look at my trades there. It's a very easy way to have the trades log somewhere, like do a journal without you journaling all the trades. And then I'll also tag my trades if I need to. So in my Facebook, you can actually tag some trades, which is a really cool feature. If you have an error with the trade, you'll tag it as error this trade. If you have a trade that's Maybe you can like look at different filters for you. You can look at where it's in the trend, counter trend, to then analyze the trading better after. So I usually tag the trades based on these kind of filters, have a bunch of them set up on my Facebook where I can kind of uh, identify the trades better, then filter them out better after for my own reviews. So that's a cool feature to have. So I do this every week, usually on Sundays or Saturdays, I'll go back to all my trades and tag these and just look at all of them. I wanna make sure there's no mistake, no error in the algo. The thing that I thought the algo would avoid, but it's still taking, just because I can affect the results long-term. We don't wanna have a mistake now, affect the result down the line for a while. We wanna have things done as we want it, and that's usually a lot better. Now, the second thing I do is monthly. I'll check the summary tab on my Facebook. So again, I'll be able to see for different pairs, what kind of results we got. Are they profitable? Which pairs are lagging behind? Which pairs are ahead? We're like very profitable. And then I can make decisions, depending on how many trades we took, to either reduce the risk on one pair, or add more risk to that pair. So I have a maximum, which is 2% per trade, which is a maximum risk I can allow myself to risk on any given trade. But let's say a pair is performing really bad, I might drop it down to a 0.5% when it was a 1% before. If it's performing really good, I might increase from 1% to 1.25%. I can increase this risk amount a little bit. So I optimize the pairs working well and I reduce the pairs working not well. And that's usually a good idea to be able to cut what doesn't work and do more of what works in the market. Now that's not always done every month because sometimes you don't have enough trades for a good decision there. But quarterly is when I really take that decision of looking at what works and what doesn't work. Like what pairs are working better, what time frames or what kind of time in the day are working better, what days are working better in the week, and what days are not working so well, then I can start to cut these things, optimize my results better. So for sure that's stuff you could do it in the back test. You could test all these things 
and get good data about it. But I found that doing it in real market, live market, gives you a better idea of like what you can expect and what it's really doing when you're doing it in the market live. So I'm okay taking a little bit less good results now. If I know I'll be able to find ways to improve later and I can start to tweak things that way. If you're someone who want to backtest everything, find the right answer for everything, have the best results possible, you'll just stay stuck in the backtest part. You can backtest for a long, long time, but unless you start to run these algos live a little bit more and start to get some live feedback, it's very hard to improve. So you want to get that done. You want to get a backtest that's decent, like a good result. Then you tweak it and improve it later as you see the market reacts. Because you also want to avoid the over-optimization. We have all these rules, you test all these settings, you make it like the best thing possible, but then it starts to not work after the backtest. So that's very crucial. And if I have any losing results for like a quarter on one pair, I'll just rerun a backtest with my good backtesting data See if there's any difference on it. See if the results are the same as the live market or are different. And this is just a safety feature to make sure I have no like issues with the, with the algo running live or the broker issues or something. I want to see that the back is the same as live. And that usually happens. It never happened that it's completely different. So I just want to make sure that it's fun and working okay uh, with this practice. So I'll just give you a overview of algo trading, kind of what things I do, how I run it. I do have a special project where I teach people how to use my own algos. I have them run them on their own platform. Because you know, I found that it's so easy to teach someone a good strategy, but they can mess up with it. They cannot take the trades correctly. They can start to second guess the trades. They can start to also like strategy jump, go to something else. But if you give them the algo, they have all the rules there, they have all the settings there, they can just use them directly. Sure, they can tweak the settings, they can like make it their own, and they should, but they have pretty much things all in place to be able to do this right. Uh, they have all the rules, they are going to take the trades, the same for everyone, and that's of course something that can help a lot of people. So for guys who don't have enough time for trading manually, they have a demanding job of business, they don't have time to be out of the charts like all the time placing trades like me when I'm traveling, they want to have something more hands off. They want to be able to set it, then forget about it, then leave it to run for a while. Uh, that's the perfect thing for them. So that project is called Algo Nation. Now I'm only opening it every couple of months because I want to make sure my students now are actually getting results. It's a lot of work and support to have people get to use an algo. It's actually harder than I thought for sure. But doing this, I'm able to kind of teach a few people, do it the right way, have these algos set up the right way, then make some returns on it. So far, a good percent of my students are profitable with the algo, and some of them are not, but I'm working on them very closely to make sure it works for them. And that's something that I'm opening up this week again for the third time so far. If you want to learn more about how that all works out, the details of it, check out the link below. I'll leave a link right there. You can read through the details. Any questions you have, you can message me. I'll be happy to answer your questions. There's a chat box on that page to message me directly on Facebook or any other uh, way also you can message me there, it's possible. So check it out. It's something that is not for everyone for sure. If you are someone who really is hardcore and like manual trading, that's not for you. If you're someone who doesn't want to run algos or have like really big technological issues, like you cannot use MT4 or you cannot learn how to use VPS, which is fairly simple, but still you don't want to do this also. It's going to be a hard time to learn. But if you're short on time, don't have a lot of time for trading, you're willing to run this on a decent amount of capital, of course, later. If you have a $200 account, it's not gonna be useful for sure. It's not gonna make you rich from a small amount of money. But if you have a decent account, which we're talking about like 5,000 and more to begin with, which you can always increase later, then that makes more sense. Okay, that's something that you have to run with at least $5,000 minimum, just to have the algo take all the trades. But ideally you wanna scale up to more than that in the future. So part of what I do with my students is make a plan with them on how to proceed, how to move forward. Like you start with 5,000, but then you should go with like 6,000, then 8,000, then 10,000 over time. Okay, so we make that plan together on how you can scale up that way. And people are able to get to a pretty good results. Now, of course, if you want to see the stats of the algos, we'll have this all on the page linked below over here. You can check this out, read through it. Any questions, you message me. I'll be happy to help out. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. I produce videos like this three times a week, one or two every Sunday. Then two videos like this during the week to teach you stuff about trading, things I do from my own experience. And hope this was useful. With that being said, I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.